Hello, and welcome to the Nutrition Diva Podcast. I'm your host, Monica Reinagel, and I'm celebrating a milestone this week. This is episode number 500. And you know what? I could not have done it without you, my listeners. This week, we're talking about intermittent fasting, one of the biggest diet and nutrition trends these days. Every week, I hear from listeners wanting to know my thoughts on it, and I'll have those for you right after this word from our sponsor. Support for today's show comes from Flava Naturals, a brand that might just change the way you think about chocolate. Flava Naturals is packed with 500 to 900 milligrams of naturally sourced cocoa flavanol antioxidants per serving. That's five to nine times the amount of flavanols of a typical dark chocolate bar. It's made from all natural ingredients and preparation methods, including the highest antioxidant cocoa beans in the world. Chocolate may have been your weakness. With Flava Naturals, it's your strength. Go to flavanaturals.com today to learn more and enter the code DIVA to get 20% off your next order. Expires December 31st. I've mentioned intermittent fasting on the podcast before in an episode on the health benefits of fasting, but that was way back in 2011. And at that point, the research was still quite preliminary and most of it had been done in rodents. Nonetheless, Researchers were excited about the potential for intermittent fasting to prevent or reverse diabetes, weight gain, DNA damage, and other artifacts of aging. Based on these promising but preliminary results, lots of people started experimenting with various forms of modified or intermittent fasting, generating a lot of positive anecdotal reports. And over the last few years, more studies have been done, some of them on actual humans. Before I dip into the latest research on this, let me just define some terms, because intermittent fasting is an umbrella term that includes a pretty wide variety of approaches, most of which fall into one of two major categories, alternate day fasting and restricted eating windows. Alternate day fasting involves switching back and forth between days when you eat more and days when you eat less. In some versions of this, you eat nothing or next to nothing on your fast days and as much as you want on your feast days. Other versions have you cut your usual food intake by a third to a half on your fast days and then allow you to eat more than your usual food intake on your feast days. This is sometimes described as calorie cycling. Now, the proportion of fast to feast days also varies. Some protocols have you fasting every other day. Another popular variation on this is the 5-2 diet, where you fast for two non-consecutive days every week. The other approach that's commonly included in discussions of intermittent fasting is the restricted eating window. I talked about this in my episode on timing your meals. Instead of restricting your food intake, you restrict your meal schedule. Again, there are lots of variations on this approach. Some people follow a four-hour eating window, eating essentially just one big meal a day. Others might eat two or three meals within an eight or 10-hour window. If you're a breakfast skipper, you might already be doing this without even realizing it. And the timing of the window is also up for debate. Because of our circadian rhythms, it might work better to put your eating window in the first half of the day. But due to our social rhythms, most people who follow this approach prefer to have their eating window in the second half of the day. Before we dig into the latest research, let me break to thank our sponsor. Everyone's busy this time of year, so as your family is getting back into the swing of fall, let HelloFresh take the guesswork out of your meals week after week. With easy-to-follow recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door, HelloFresh makes dinner easy on those hectic weeknights when your to-do list is a mile long. With HelloFresh, you don't have to choose between making a last-minute run to gather ingredients or spending money on takeout. All you have to choose is which plan to order. Classic, Veggie or family, it's that easy. And it saves time so you can do more of what you love. There's even a one-pot recipe on the menu every week for maximum flavor and minimal cleanup. One of my favorite HelloFresh meals was the butternut squash risotto. I love butternut squash, but I gotta admit, I hate peeling and seeding and cubing them. But with HelloFresh, all the work was done for me. I get to skip right to the fun part. And it's always more fun to cook when you can feel confident that it's going to turn out great. For a total of $60 off, that's $20 off your first three boxes, visit HelloFresh.com slash Diva60 and enter the code Diva60. 
It's like receiving six meals free. Just go to HelloFresh.com slash Diva60 and enter the code Diva60. Okay, so let's take a look at what some of this newer research has to say. A lot of the current excitement about intermittent fasting is still based on some of those early animal studies, which found that intermittent fasting led to weight loss, improvements in body composition, blood sugar metabolism, and all kinds of other exciting things, even though the rats were still eating the same amount of food, just on a different schedule. Unfortunately, the human studies have not been quite so dramatic. Intermittent fasting and restricted eating windows do tend to lead to weight loss, but that's because people who are following these regimens end up eating less. These approaches can also lead to improvements in body composition, cholesterol, and blood sugar metabolism, but no more so than in people who lose weight through more traditional dietary approaches. Although we keep hoping to discover a magic formula that allows us to lose weight without actually eating less, we haven't found it yet. It still does come down to taking in fewer calories than you use. But there are a lot of approaches that can result in reduced calorie intake. You can decide to avoid certain foods. You can eat everything, but in smaller portions. You can fast once or twice a week and not think about it the rest of the time, or you can institute a restricted eating window. All of these approaches have pros and cons. And we can talk about how each of these could be optimized. But when it comes down to which is best for losing weight and all the health benefits that flow from that, it really boils down to which one is the most sustainable for you. What suits your lifestyle, personality, and preferences? Because when it comes to weight loss, your ability to maintain a lower weight long term trumps just about every other consideration. But what if you don't need to lose weight? Does intermittent fasting have anything to offer? Well, a couple of studies have tried to tease apart the effects of meal timing from the effects of weight loss by doing studies where people ate just once a day, but still ate enough to maintain their weight. In particular, researchers were interested to test the hypothesis that eating the same amount of food but in a shorter time period or having a more extended fasting period would help improve blood sugar metabolism. Results so far have been mixed, but I can say that if your goal is to improve your glucose metabolism, early results favor putting your restricted eating window in the first half of the day and not the second which most people find to be considerably less appealing. So here's the bottom line on intermittent fasting so far. We need to do a lot more research into the long-term effects of intermittent fasting on health and to sort out which of these various approaches is going to produce the best results and for which people. There are a few groups for whom intermittent fasting may not be appropriate, including pregnant women and people with a history of eating disorders. And anyone who uses medications to manage their blood sugar should seek guidance from a nutrition or a health professional before experimenting with any sort of fasting protocol. But if you're not in any of those categories, you need to lose some weight, then this might be something that can work for you. Despite the popularity of the 5-2 diet, which is an alternate day fasting protocol, I'm a little more drawn to the restricted eating window in part because people seem to find it more comfortable and easier to sustain. If you decide to experiment, or you've been experimenting with this already, I'd love to hear how it's working for you, what you like about it, and how long you've been doing it. You can post your thoughts on our website or on the Nutrition Diva Facebook page. You'll find a transcript of today's episode along with links to some of the research I reviewed at nutritiondiva.quickanddirtytips.com. And you'll find me at nutritionovereasy.com. Thanks for listening and have a great week.